As we walked from the harbor towards the warehouses, a certain ship had caught my eye also. Hmm? I wonder what kind that one is. In amongst all the other ships docked on the bay was one that appeared unusually worn. Is something the matter, Miss Whiteley? Why have you stopped walking? It strikes me as suspicious. That couldn't be one of the smuggling ships Mr. Mackenzie mentioned, could it? Wait, Emily! Where are you going? God help me. She's hopeless. Come, Watson. We're going after her. Right! If you're not back within ten minutes, I'll let Mr. Mackenzie know the situation. Not to worry. We'll be back well before then. I'll believe that when I see it. I would be quite astonished if you return with her before those ten minutes are up. <laughs> Alright, and on that note, we can skip through our introductions to these new boys. Just gotta be careful not to skip too far ahead for when our other boys come to save our butts. Well, not really save our butts, but join in the foray. Alright, they're going in. With their awesome attacks. Such a good team. There we go. Hey, not too bad. Miss Whiteley. Two of my schoolmates arrived to see to it that I was well. You know, just two schoolmates, no big deal. Holmes! Watson! Truly, you are a marvel. Did Mr. Mackenzie not warn us against wandering off alone? I fear your brain will be the one puzzle I'll never be able to solve. Not that I want to. I hope you two haven't fretted too much over me. You've not been searching for me all this time, have you? Really, I didn't intend for there to be so much fuss. Oh, there was no fussing at all, I assure you. Your actions are always so unpredictable, they inspire incredulousness more than worry. There's no need to hide your relief. Just say you fuss plenty. You were worried she'd become caught in something after all Mr. Mackenzie said earlier. I certainly was. Bah. Speaking of which, what's all this about? Holmes's eyes were focused on the veritable sea of collapsed smugglers. A large group of smugglers were trying to flee when two boys from Japan to the east decided to stop them. They routed them all like it was no trouble at all. It was a spectacular sight. Routed? It means that they were overwhelmingly bested, Watson. We must help them retrieve the cargo that fell into the sea, as thanks. Wait. Why? We've only just arrived. But we shan't turn our backs on people in need, hmm? Oh. We're in for the lecture of the century from Mr. Mackenzie when we get back. Still, I can't say I disagree. Let's get helping. I see a few injured people over there. I'll ask if there's anything I can do for them. I don't have a choice in this, do I? Thank you, dears. Together, we assisted in retrieving the cargo the smugglers had knocked into the sea back to dry land. Watson, meanwhile, did his part in giving treatment to those who possess injuries, however small they happen to be. Upon the Yard's arrival, who had been informed of the smugglers' presence, the smugglers were left with no other position but to be taken into custody. We're in your debt for your assistance in this matter. That gang's been a nuisance for quite some time. They've made a name for themselves bringing drugs into the country, but known as they were, we could not catch hide nor hair of them. So when someone from that ship that arrived in the country reported they'd been seen, we thought it must be some mistake. But thanks to the three of you, they evade capture no longer. Well done. He's making it sound like we were the ones who did the work. I'd heard Harrington's students were visiting as part of a trip, but then you solve a crime we've been investigating for ages while you're at it. Your school bleeds its reputation. There appears to be some confusion, sir. We were not the ones responsible for this. All we did was help the people who suffered at their hands. By the time the two of us arrived, they were already apprehended. Now, now. No need to be so modest. We'll be certain to let your school know what you did here today. Sir, he's telling the truth. The ones responsible were those two over the- 
As I was about to tell the man about Akichi and Kobayashi, the second officer, whose tone was a dramatic shift from light to dark compared to the first, addressed them directly. Off with you, then! Scotland Yard will be carrying out a formal investigation here. We shan't have your sort getting in the way. What? But we were the ones who captured those men! Are we to believe your tall tales? What could a couple of feeble yellow monkeys do against hardened criminals? This is no place for you filthy Janies to hang about. How can he talk down like that to them? <clears throat> Try saying that again! What do you know about us? You can't even say what we are right! We're Japanese, not Janies! Kobayashi! The boy went to strike the officer with a clenched fist, but Akachi grabbed him by the shoulders and forced him back. Damn it! Let me go! Let me go! Have you forgotten why we came here? We didn't come all this way to quarrel with law enforcement. Others from their ship began to leave, and so Akachi forced the still furious Kobayashi to join him to break the tension. Much to my disturbance, they continued to receive unwelcome glares from the officers and bystanders who happened to have meandered close enough to survey the commotion. Akachi! Kobayashi! My darkening train of thought was only broken by a sigh from Holmes. Oh. Miss Whiteley, if you wish to go after them, do so quickly. Pardon? Given the speed you walk, if you wait much longer, you're going to lose sight of them. You'll have to give your weight and apologies to the teacher and our schoolmates upon your return, but I don't see that being enough to deter you from running off for the present. Holmes? He's right. Go on. We'll be waiting here for you. Watson! Thank you, boys. I shall be back soon. I hurried off after Akachi and Kobayashi. You made it sound like she's the only one allowed to give her weight and apologies, but I have a feeling that was as much for you as it was for her. And you, Watson. <laughs> I've helped with the cargo and the injured. We're both waist deep in the situation as it is, so why not keep at it till we're up to the neck? Now, what excuse are we best off using? I'm not certain conjuring up some elaborate lies are our best plan. Miss Whiteley is a right terrible actress. All it would take is her opening her mouth for our story to unravel. I wish I could argue otherwise. The truth it is, then. This is, that's very audacious, considering we just had a whole episode where we were pretending to be Miss Watson. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that now. Wait a minute. William H. Watson, how dare you? A great change would be coming to the classroom a few days after the trip. On the way to our classroom, I bumped into Marple along the corridor and called out to her. Excuse me, Marple? I wanted to apologize for worrying you at the port. I wasn't thinking. You did worry me, but I cannot be upset after seeing you're still in good health. That's all that matters to me. That being said, it isn't often one gets to witness you, Holmes, and Watson apologizing so desperately as a trio. Holmes especially. Watching him grovel is a treat worth savoring. So you're used to me and Watson apologizing. The class was thrilled to witness such a rare spectacle. I'm pleased you all found the sight so worth seeing. Perhaps I should begin charging for the privilege in the future. You're a funny one, Holmes. You'll never have to charge again unless you do something else that warrants an apology. Something about hearing that from you makes my blood boil. Simmer down, then. Your grades are always so often a cut above the rest that it was a treat to see you misbehave. Your standards of normal are skewed by how often you get told off for forgetting homework and falling asleep during class. Good morning, Mr. McKenzie. Ahem. C class, take. Please take your seats. Mr. McKenzie's voice had been hoarse since the trip, likely owing to how the poor man had to shout for hours on end. His appearance was pitiable enough at the best of times, so adding that weak texture made him seem orders of magnitude more so than ever. <laughs> First, 
I need to introduce two foreign exchange students who will be joining us from today. Come in. Oh! The second I saw these new students, I was almost pleasantly speechless. Akachi Kobayashi! So this is your class! Lower your voice, Kobayashi. Oh, come on! Don't pretend you're not happy to see her! <laughs> All I implied is that shouting personal matters in the classroom is inappropriate. So you are happy! One was naturally brimming with energy from ear to ear, whilst the other defaulted to being reserved. They couldn't have been more different. I want you to stay quiet till I give you permission to speak, Kobayashi. Excuse the lengthy interruption, Mr. McKenzie. Do continue. Certainly. This is Kinichiro Akachi and Seji Kobayashi. They've traveled here from distant Japan. As soon as he mentioned where they were from, the classroom erupted with curious whispering and admiring sighs. They were to be in someone else's care for the duration of their stay, but tragically, that person passed away of illness before they could make it here. But in light of their achievement shortly after their arrival, our academy has chosen to take them under its wing. So it's all come together. When we went to give our apologies to the teacher, I reported every possible detail I could recall regarding the incident with the smuggler ship. That, of course, included Akachi and Kobayashi's involvement. I'm so pleased he took the time to find and enroll them here. Good show, Mr. McKenzie! I always knew he was the head of our course for a reason. For a brief moment, the lanky, weary figure of Mr. McKenzie seemed almost dazzling. Almost. It may take them time to adjust to a new environment and culture. Please, I ask that you do what you can to make them feel welcome. <laughs> now, there are two empty seats waiting for you. Sit down, gentlemen, if you would. Before that, sir, I have a favor I wish to ask of you. Oh? <clears throat> what might that be, Mr. Akachi? Would it be too brazen to request being appointed as our class representative? This coming from the mysterious new edition had all at attention. Holmes, can I ask you something? No need. I know exactly what you'll say. You'd like to know if we have such a position to fill, correct? Precisely. You read my mind. Hmm. As far as I'm aware, there was one. But, you see, the detective's course has always had its share of... colorful characters, making it a nasty job to unite us as one. Anyone who's tried hasn't lasted long. In short, the position does exist, but it may as well not. I hope that was a joke, Akachi. Akachi's request had come when Kobayashi was ready to take his seat. For some reason unknown to the rest of us, he visibly despaired at the thought. I would never make a joke of this. We came to English to further the development of our homeland. To that end, we must use the limited time afforded to us to learn and better ourselves as much as possible, and taking the leisure route of studying like any other student. Why, that's simply not enough. We must constantly strive to undertake greater responsibility, to achieve greater things, to expand our efforts beyond the bare minimum. It is, I declare, almost vital I assume a position of leadership. Akachi took no notice of the astonishment from those around him. His proclamation was indeed brazen, to use his wording, but he fully intended to stand by it. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. This is giving everyone a fine first impression of us. I can feel the headache coming already. I understand how you are, but I don't suppose you could tone down your enthusiasm on the first day? Everyone's sure to think we're all like this. Look at that! I've never seen such determination. Oh, but it only feels right for a man who's trekked her all the way from the Far East to be so different to the average student. Absolutely. He's the same age as us, but here he is. Shouldering the future of his country like it's the natural thing to do. It's inspiring. Ah! Holmes! 
His voice carried throughout the classroom. I've heard you are effectively the detective who represents this class, as well as that you possess a ring from Her Majesty for your abilities. As one who aspires to become a first-rate detective, it is a true privilege to meet you. Hmm. Dear me, he can't be very ordinary if he's already latched onto Holmes. I'll say. No one close to ordinary would engage with our most baffling schoolmate. Me? Baffling? Huh. You speak nonsense. There's nothing wrong with closely inspecting or being alert of one's surroundings. It helps me to notice evidence far more acutely than the average citizen. And here he is with a matter-of-fact quip. Those two may be quite similar, come to think of it. Holmes had earned himself a fair amount of stares right along with our foreign exchange student. I am pleased to meet you as well, Akachi. If I may, I want to make something very clear to you, Holmes. Here we go with the objections. I will not lose to you. You're the best here as we speak, but there will come a time when I become a first-rate detective and claim your place. Mark my words. Will you now? May I counter? If becoming a first-rate detective is your aim, then don't chase someone else's shadow to get there. You should follow your own path as I do. Spend enough time musing over wins and losses, and you may become so self-involved that you lose sight of the finish line. Is that so? Am I to interpret that a detective aims not to best others, but to be unprecedented in their own right? Interpret my words as you wish. <laughs> I'm impressed and new. I throw down the gauntlet and your retort is to give me advice. I see a first-rate detective must also be a first-rate British gentleman. Another lesson well learnt. Akachi swiftly produced a notebook and began to scribble away. It's hard to say if he's an optimist or if he truly doesn't realize Holmes meant nothing from that. Ha! <laughs> oh, you don't know the half of it. You won't find another man as smart as he is simple. And I do mean simple. Um, I wouldn't take it that far. No, no. Listen, you can't get a recipe more basic than Akachi. The first ingredient? His studies. The second, his diplomacy. Physical training is enough to be third and fourth. Then there's the most important one of them all. His spectacles. Why those? I've never met anyone else so humorless. Absolutely not a single funny bone to be found in his body. You know what makes him smile? Work! He's a slave to productivity! Oh, so he's too diligent. I'm not a slave to anything, Kobayashi. And I do hope you'll excuse my burrowing your notebook. You did? Wait! That's one of my seven tools! You shouldn't be using it! You should never let your guard down, not even for a moment. Let this be a lesson to further your studies. Ah, oh, even across the ocean you would spring trouble on others in the name of education. I find his devotion to bettering himself quite admirable. Yes, but this sounds less like devotion and more like obsession. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. And if I may... I think you're all forgetting one sorely important detail. Marple sharply changed the subject to grab our attention and then announced in a dignified manner. We do have a detective without peer in our class, but it isn't Holmes. It's Emily Whiteley. What? Well! Uh, you're right. I did forget. You never told us you were such a legend, Emily! She, she overstates my capabilities! I swear it! I'm nowhere near with that being without peer. When we first met, your energy and behavior piqued my interest. Now I see how exceptionally modest you are as well. They say all that glitters is not gold, but you shimmer more with every revelation. Dang, I forgot about this boy! <laughs> 
such poetry. I shimmer? I fear I don't understand. To put it more concisely, he's saying the truly capable do not flaunt their talents. They behave as I do. Uh, as you do? Oh, I'm sure. I'll admit that what Miss Marple says is correct, Akachi. She does occasionally possess moments of brilliance that surpass even my intellect. I do stress occasional, but I have seen it happen. Would you look at that? Holmes praised someone! Reluctantly, but I heard it with my own ears. These moments must truly be exceptional if someone such as you accepts them as brilliance. Perhaps it's a regular occurrence in a country ruled by a queen, but I'm moved by how the women here excel. Seemingly inspired, Akachi once again began scribbling in the borrowed notebook. This is a nation ruled by Her Majesty and filled with refined ladies and gentlemen. Would it be fair to assume this enriching lifestyle is more the rule than the exception for a young British woman? Quite fair. The concept of ladies first is bred into our culture. You must always extend a kind hand towards women. Hmm. Extend a kind hand. And it's doubly important to understand how they think. We gentlemen can't very well extend our hand without knowing when to take lead, as I'm sure you realize. Men have to understand how women think and lead the way. Hmm. And as soon as the opportunity presents itself, men have to strike with all their might. Strike! Then conquer! Man must defend his prize to the very end. Strike, conquer, and defend. Well, well. I wasn't aware there were so many complex strategies lurking beneath the surface. Is this still about women? Why must it be so violent? Oh, it's absolutely complex. No man simply wants for the girl of his dreams. He puts in all the effort he can muster to win her heart. I'm making a note of that. Might I suggest we do something about these two? I'm sure ladies first is more about putting women, well, first, and less about how to get them to fall in love with you. Selecting which information is likely to be vital is an important part of being a detective, if I may add. If he can't do that, he has a long way to go. Wonderful, wonderful. Ambition and enthusiasm are always two qualities I love to see in a student. <laughs> Very well, Akachi. I'm happy to appoint you as our new class representative. I have high hopes for you. Thank you, Mr. McKenzie. After they had been welcomed into the class, I volunteered to show the two of them around the academy. From what I'd been told, they were to live in the boys' dormitory for the duration of their stay. Okay, I think we can skip a little bit here. Because you guys are chatting for a bit. Until, um, poison glass, for lack of a better word. Alright, carefully. There we go. It was only until our next lesson together, in fact. Watson, it's a terrible thing to forget your homework, but don't dig yourself a deeper hole by following through with such an insincere apology. Ugh, I'm sorry. As for you, Gordon... You are here to be educated by some of this country's most brilliant. Why dress so slovenly for this honor? Sort yourself out at once. <gasps> Pardon me. Lupin, you ought to learn to handle that ring with more care. You're a detective, it's time you were aware of it. Ah, uh, of course. I'm terribly sorry. I'll take more care in the future. Not the tiniest indiscretion gets past him. I can believe he has eyes at the back of his head. That's enough, Akachi. How's Mr. Underwood meant to teach us anything if you spend the entire class nitpicking every little thing? You aren't helping. I don't see how he could teach you at all when you don't even care to take out your textbook, Kobayashi. Hmm? Uh, ha ha ha! Yes, well, I was just about to take it out before you said anything. 
Laughing awkwardly, he started rooting through his bag for his textbook. Uh. Watching Akachi, I had a certain feeling about him. Uh, not this time. Next time. I wasn't certain I would get on all that well with him after all. He reminded me too much of Pendleton in some sense. At least Akachi means well, unlike him, who took much fun in being unpleasant to me. <laughs> Akachi's way of fault finding was easier for me to swallow. Ugh, this isn't good. An uncontrollable desire to sleep had overtaken me since lunch. As the minutes passed, it became more and more difficult to fight off. My eyelids are so... heavy. And Mr. Underwood, if you have the time to gossip about you and your wife's indolence, you'd best put what little energy you have left into pointing out your students' shortcomings before carrying on with our lesson. What? what uh, indolence? I, I was only describing our honeymoon. Oh boy. Now he looks as drained of energy as Mr. Mackenzie. And that's hardly Akachi's fault. Everything he's saying is the truth. I can't disagree, but he could let us down gently. Excuse me, Emily? I can't be the only one who thinks Akachi's behavior is a bit excessive, can I? Hello? Emily? Good lord. Sorry, Watson. I somehow managed to sleep the entire lesson away. Oh, drat! I can't believe I did that! Miss Whiteley. Uh, Akachi? That really wasn't my intention. It was, it was just too difficult to resist the temptation. I didn't come over here to hear excuses. I came to ask you a question. Are you here with the intention to study hard and become a detective? Uh, of course! Although, I'll admit that my catnap would suggest otherwise. I wish to become a first-rate detective. The best of the best. Then you shouldn't have the free time for dilly-dallying whilst in class. Y yes You're absolutely right. Indeed, I could not disagree. How could I argue with sleeping during lessons? There's no need to be so harsh. You've done more than enough forcing your opinions down on others for one day. It's not right. I'm not angry if that's your worry, nor am I attempting to force my opinions onto her. That being said, Miss Whiteley, do you not find your actions wasteful? In what way? You live in a country where a woman's position in society is formally recognized, and your talents are similarly acknowledged by your peers. Rather than try and polish these talents, you allow them to stagnate with a smile. I can hardly think of a more frustrating waste. Especially as there are many in this world who fruitlessly strive with all their heart to have their abilities recognized. Akachi. I am also of the opinion that you would do well not to betray the expectations placed upon you as your queen's detective. It's true. I couldn't agree more. Should I permit myself complacency and forgo working to better myself, where does that leave the trust Her Majesty placed in me? Akachi's chiding had spoken to me on some level, giving me a renewed feeling of motivation. Bless you, Akachi! I feel I can do just about anything now! I'm pleased to hear that. That's a new sight. He scolds and she thanks him. <laughs> That's why we say she's without peer. She sees things differently to others. And as much as that pleases me, I would be remiss if I didn't express the same concerns for our other student who was sleeping. Who? Oh. My eyes followed Akachi's stare, and at the other end of it was... This isn't good. He set his eyes on Jack. You're right that it's not good, but I'll admit to wanting to see how this plays out. That boy is Jack. The way he stares out the window is quite usual for him. That's what he wants others to think, but my eyes won't be fooled. I don't need to look at someone to know whether they're concentrating or not in class. I can sense it. Sense it? 
Is that right? This is but another reward gained from my studies. I don't know how you can do that, because I can't. And not only did he sleep through the lesson, but he's sleeping as we speak. I've more than a few choice words for him. I, I pray this doesn't get ugly, but the odds of this being a civilized conversation aren't as favorable as I'd like them to be. My eyes followed Akachi as he made his way over to Jack's desk, but this only worked to distract me from an unexpected someone barreling in my direction. Ah! Miss Whiteley, run! Hmm? By the looks of it, Lupin had collected into his hands a pile of books from his desk. Convenient. After which, I could only assume, he must have caught his foot on the leg of his chair, causing them to tumble gracelessly out of his grip and towards my head. Ah! <laughs> All I could do was try to use my arms to protect myself. I braced for impact. This was certainly going to hurt. Lupin, you ought to take more care with the Academy's property. It was thanks to Akachi's quick thinking as he grabbed my arm that I was able to escape without being hit by a single one of them. What an awful mess I've made of things! Are, are you both alright? Yes, I'm well, Lupin. Thank you, Akachi. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't stepped in. Whilst he was still supporting me, his gaze was dropped awkwardly towards the ground. Um, no. This was not thing. Akachi? He seemed to lose the will to speak mid-sentence, and I noticed his gaze was fixed unmovingly on something. Confused, I followed his line of sight to discover what had his attention. Oh! I was at a loss for words. His hand just so happened to fall upon my bosom. Uh-oh. Jealous Watson's coming out! What? what the hell, Akachi? Did you think you could use all the confusion to... to... Taking advantage of a woman whilst pretending to assist her is truly disgraceful. Strive and conquer, indeed. D... Do? Don't say such licentious things! Akachi jumped away as if he had been smacked by an invisible force. I... I had no intention to. I mean... Yes, uh, Akachi. I was somewhat shaken by the whole experience, but by the looks of it, not nearly to the same degree he was. My most sincere apologies. What I did was beyond depraved. I still have much to learn. Please, excuse me. With that, he was gone before I could tell him it was alright. Hold it! Akachi! I expected better from him. There was no reason to lose his composure over something so asinine. It's a bit more delicate than that. He's never so much as held hands with a girl, so that must have been quite a shock to the system. A shock is putting it mildly. Still, touching her chest by accident like that is just not on. What, Watson, would it trouble you if I asked that you not shout such things? I must confess to some embarrassment. I I didn't mean to, Emily. I can't apologize enough. All of this c c came about because of my clumsiness. That point was never up for debate. I hope you'll forgive him, Emily. He has his flaws, his stubbornness for one, so he has his good and bad days. Kobayashi puffed out his cheeks and sighed. Pah. But I'll vouch for his character time and time again. He's a good man. I swear on my life. Oh, I know he's a good man. All this came about because he genuinely tried to help me. The results may have been unexpected, but his heart was in the right place, and I was grateful. You're too kind. Try and make friends with him, all right? I'll bet that he wants the same. Kobayashi then left the classroom in pursuit of Akachi. Do you have to pick the seat next to mine for all your jolly talk? Oops! Jack! I didn't know you were awake! Even I can't sleep through all that. Ugh. No need to make a fuss over something so small. I wouldn't call them small. I instinctively looked down at my chest. 
Perhaps they weren't the most developed in the country, but they weren't disappointing by any means. I wasn't talking about that. Ah, uh, yes. A typical response that rang ever true to his character. I dare say even Akachi couldn't change his ways. Oh boy. Alright, well we can skip through this. Ah. We get the chance to write in our diary. It's been a while. Perhaps I should write in my diary. Oh. I can write about both of them? Um, Kobayashi? I think I'll write about Kobayashi today. He is such a bright and energetic exchange student who came all the way from the Far East, and he is Akachi's seemingly capable assistant. Looks like an ordinary girl to me. Well, ordinary as far as here, I'm sure. Never seen a real blonde-haired, blue-eyed beauty in my life. Oh, but he's not a bad sort with his energy. He's been very responsible. Wasn't he speaking Japanese at the time? How could you write about that? <laughs> he's constantly watching out for Akachi, a man who takes pride in pushing himself too hard, which must be exhausting for the one who can only stand by his side and watch. I hope we'll become fast friends. One can hope. All right. And Pendleton's here with the update. Okay, very carefully. Very carefully. Very carefully. I think we're at the end. Yes. To be continued. <laughs>